This week's episode is brought to you by Lumoid. Lumoid is a try-before-you-buy service for all sorts of consumer electronics. From camera gear and drones to fitness trackers and audio equipment, they have an extensive collection of gear, and you can check them out at lumoid.com slash photorectv. This week, new Lumoid customers can save 15% off their rental by using the code PHOTOREC15. And by viewers like you. Visit photorec.tv slash support to learn how you can support this show and join our community of photographers. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Photo Mishmash. I'm Christina. And I'm Toby. And this is episode 86. Hello everyone. I already said hello, but hello welcome again. Welcome back to another Photo Mishmash. Yeah, so every week we bring you photography news discussions we announce the winners for our instagram challenge if you don't know about that check the link notes down the show notes down below and at the very end of each show we answer your questions live so if you have a photography related question post it on the chat now or throughout the show and we'll add them to the queue to answer them at the very end of the show that's right. We have a pile of announcements to talk about this week. We've got CP Plus coming up, so all of the camera manufacturers and lens manufacturers are just barfing out new gear. We'll talk about that stuff. Yeah. I wonder if it's smart to run two giveaways at the same time. You know what? What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and do that. We've got an exciting new giveaway on top of the other giveaway to announce. This one's very short and sweet, and it's very sweet. It's not candy. Um, we got those Instagram challenges, your local photos, your participation was fantastic. Yeah. This was, in my memory, I had the most difficult time picking. There I are, did too. There were many, many awesome pictures. Yeah. Loved seeing glimpses of your hometown. Yeah. I participated twice, which is a record. Did you participate at all, Christina? No. Dang, nabbit. I know. And um, what else? We got the photos from space, and we're going to be answering your questions, as Christina said. And uh, then we kick it off in the after show where we poke the cat. So, <laughs> let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. And uh, uh, first, in case you missed it, so last week, or not over the past week, the ADD was announced, the Canon ADD, and you made a video about it. That's right. Um, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it. it. For some people, that Canon ADD, which sounds a lot like you have ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, um, represents a, a nice upgrade. And it certainly represents a nice upgrade from people from earlier Rebel models. I'm honestly not excited about it. Um, you know, there are, it's, it's a very different market than it was just a couple years ago when the 70D came out. I mean, the GH4 is just fantastic for people who are very interested in video, even though that's an older camera now. Uh, and there's just, there's just so many cameras that are kind of specialized. So if you want like a really good video camera, there's another choice. If you want a really good photo camera, there's other choices. But on the whole, it's a nice camera. So you can go see my thoughts about it. I've also got a post that tells you what's different between it and the 70D and the T6S. Um, and um, what else? The last vlog as well. That's right, the so, last vlog from New Zealand. If you didn't watch the last vlog, go do that. Maybe not now, maybe after the show. And if you haven't watched any of the other ones, go and do that as well because they're really awesome. And I know that I'm really biased because I helped make them, but they really are. And we've incorporated some photography tutorials along with like really cool scenery from New Zealand and they're just really fun and some of them are kind of funny sometimes and yeah I'm doing a really great job they're funny selling not them. They're of kind us. of funny. No, they're you know, funny like the other people that we were lucky enough to go on that trip with and, yeah. you know in included in the uh, shots. Yeah. Um I I'm really happy with them. I'm also pretty proud because a lot of editing comments on the last one which I mostly edited. So hmm. Take that where you want, Christina. I didn't realize it was a competition, but Everything's okay. Everything's a competition. <laughs> I'm a man. Uh, so that, so that in case you missed it, let's see. And I mean, we're going to talk about these in the news stories, but I have blogged almost everything that's been barfed out by the camera manufacturers in the last week. 
Nice. Yeah. So I've had some time on my hand. So, so yeah. So here. check out photoreg.tv for all of those things as well. Um, you know, there's oftentimes there's not really a lot of time to release videos for everything, but there is time to put bl blog posts together. So you can read through that if you're curious about rumors and announcements and things like that. That's right. And I think you said this, but uh, show notes are linked right down below this video. So everything we're talking about, gear on the table, the things you missed, that is all linked right there. Click over to it and you'll be able to see all of that good stuff. Yeah, and speaking of gear on the table, let's talk about what you have this week. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes I like to talk about things that I have no idea if they're going to work yet or not, but I was excited. This company reached out to me and said, hey, you have a YouTube channel. We talk about this, um, and they have a piece of gear that I have basically wanted. I didn't know that they had it, but it sits up here on top of your camera and allows you to feed two audio sources in to a camera, stereoized, doesn't need a battery. These are the Saramonic folks. You've got little individual level adjustments because as you know, Christina's a little soft, I'm a little bit louder. And uh, in New Zealand, we brought along our wireless mics, the little Sennheisers. But we didn't have the opportunity to use them that much because it's kind of complicated. Because we didn't have this yeah, and yeah, it's a pain right. to feed both in. Yeah. But that definitely gives you the best audio. We used the little shotgun mic and we're happy with that. But in some situations, the lav mics would have done better. I know a lot of people have different opinions. When we used to have audio problems on the show, knock on wood, people are like, this mic would work better. Our experience has been the lav mics have given us the most consistent good sound when we have it all set up right. Yeah. Um, so that I'm excited about trying out and, and using over the next couple of weeks and sharing more with you. And they're like, well, also, why don't you, we see that you've uploaded a GoPro video recently. Why don't you try out this GoPro mic? So it's a little lav mic for the GoPro. As you know or may not know, GoPros have a USB port that you use for mics. It's kind of annoying. So you have to buy their special accessories or somebody else's, like Saramonics. I think this is a very reasonably priced. You probably can't use it if you're, well, never mind. I realized as soon as I said it, that was a you silly question. No yeah. I meant with a case, which it doesn't necessarily mean that you can right. take that and underwater. They so. do have the skeleton cases that allow right. you to hold the GoPro yeah. and put it on things. What I appreciate, though, is that they realize if you've... If it looks like a tiny little wig. Oh, that's <laughs> our, we have a guest. Do we have a guest? Uh, <laughs> teeny tiny scientist wig. Oh, um, mad scientist. Uh, mad scientist. Right? They, they figure out if you have a mic on a GoPro, you're probably doing some kind of activity and uh, that ha involves a lot of wind. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm going to try to go for, I said I was going to try to go for a bike ride. It's like the most disgusting weather outside right now. Terrible out there. Um, but uh, but maybe, maybe I'll try something and see how this works. We, you know, this isn't really what they sent the gear for. They didn't send us cat toys. You need to start your own channel of cat toys, and then you get to do that. Uh, so. No fun. Speaking of GoPros. Yes. Uh, we, well. When you shot that video in Fiji with the 4K, uh, the 4K video with the GoPro, that was uh, given to you by Lumoid, right? That's you were right. renting it from yep. Lumoid, borrowing it from yep. Lumoid. Um, so, for our giveaway, <laughs> Lumoid wants to give one lucky viewer out there a GoPro, not a rental of a GoPro, like a full on GoPro that you get to keep. Yeah. Just for you. Yeah, let me talk. I mean, so yeah, let's yeah. talk about it. Well, so I mean, I have a GoPro Hero Three Plus. It's a it's a little fritzy, and I knew going to New Zealand that I wanted to do some of the 4K time lapses, and I knew going to Fiji afterwards that I was going to do some snorkeling, and I wanted something that was going to uh, be reliable. Mine is not so much reliable anymore after it spent last summer a few days under the water in the river. Uh, so, borrowed from Lumoid, the GoPro Hero 4. Time lapse, fantastic. The video lapse, because it'll create that in camera, which I really appreciate when we're trying to do these things quick on the go. So, I mean, that's why Lumoid and services like Lumoid, they're perfect because they allow you, when you need a piece of gear for something specific or you want to try a piece of gear out, to do that. Yeah, they have, you know, cameras, drones, like pretty much. Just about anything you can think of. And they have a great selection of fitness trackers as well, which I was just over at my friend's house recently. And she was telling me about wanting to track her fitness and like not being sure she goes to cycling classes and she isn't sure how much 
uh, energy she actually spends working out. So um, I told her about Lumoid because it's a really good idea to just like grab a bunch of fitness trackers, try them out, keep whatever one you want, and then same with cameras and camera gear. It's that's nice right. to be able to try before you buy. That's right. And that that's the next level that Lumoid takes it to that, that's really nice is because you try this gear out, you're spending money on that, I recognize that, you earn credits towards purchasing this gear later on down the road. Yeah. So later on, if I decide I want, because I really need the Hero 4, I really need to replace mine, then I have not like just thrown away all of my money. Right. Some of it has gone towards purchasing yeah. that. That's really valuable. So the big question you all might be asking is, where do I go enter? Right now, you can go to photorec.tv. Yeah. It is on the front page. If you're watching this after the fact, just check the show notes. And one of the top links in the show notes will take you to the giveaway page. Just put your email in yeah. there. It is open to U.S. residents only because Lumoid is a U.S. company. Sorry about that. but um, And how long does it wrong. last? One week. Yeah. You got one week. Get your email in there. I hope you win a GoPro Hero 4. I'm really excited. I love being able to do this. It's fun. It's exciting. And I want to see what you all create. So. Yeah. Go enter right now. That's right. And if you are thinking about renting, lumoid.com slash TV and that coupon code, PhotoRec TV 15 or PhotoRec 15. Hope we'll, that, Riley. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, <laughs> he's looking for it. Sorry, uh, I don't mean and, to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, that will save you 15% off your first rental order. Great. So, all yeah, right. Yeah, look at it. Look for it in the show notes. All right, now we are going to move on to news, and we've got some announcements. The first one is before before we get that. Can I can I barf out like all the camera manufacturers have? This is thanks to yeah. Dalibor and Jeffrey who are in the chat a little early, kind of like summarizing everything that's been released. Okay. Two Tamron full frame lenses, two Sigma APS lenses, a Panasonic, which is a micro four thirds lens. Venix Optics is coming with a twelve millimeter f two eight full frame. There's a new version of the Miticon thirty five for APS C cameras. Then there's the Nikon DL series, three cameras that were announced, plus the Coolpix three series. I don't really care about those. We've got the Sigma DP, the Tamron SP. That's not a camera, right? That's that little, are we calling the tap in? What is that Tamron SP? Uh, the Nissan Flash, the i60, the Sigma EF 630, the Panasonic Lumix G 16 to 80. What do we miss? The Sigma MC mount. I mean, there's just been, oh, that four new action camera from Ricoh. Uh, there has just been a pile of announcements. We're going to touch on some of them. Most of this stuff is linked in the show notes. So uh, if you're interested in reading more all about it, you can find that link below. Yeah. What so do you want to start with? First things first, I think this is kind of exciting. Um, Sigma is releasing a mount, a Sony mount that will allow people to use Sigma lenses on the Sony. And I believe they only have, do they only have Canon version of this or do they also have Nikon version? They do not have a Nikon version okay, right so now. Okay, so it's they, only Canon. Canon and Sigma SA mount. Okay. So if you, right. you know, or one of those three people that has a Sigma SA mount lens. It's about $100 cheaper than the Metabones adapter. Isn't it, isn't it a little bit cheaper than that? Because it's two forty nine. What's the Metabones adapter? I think it's three ninety nine. Uh, oh, it's one fifty. One hundred and fifty dollars cheaper yeah. than that than the Metabones. Yeah. So it looks really promising. We'll see how it actually, uh, you know, performs. What, what has been our experience using the Comlight and the Metabones with Sigma lenses? The Metabones is okay. The Comlight is not. Um, it depends really on what lens and focal length you're using and... Well, with the Sigma specifically, because we have... Oh, with the Sigmas? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. We've got the 50 and the 35, yeah. and we've had very poor results. Yeah, you have to manual the focus. Metabone's a little better, but not But really. not really. No. no. Yeah. Uh, so this is, this is I, obviously, Sigma has seen that as well. Now, the question we, we were chatting before the show, will this work with other lenses? Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm curious because what is it that makes a Sigma lens uh, different enough from a Canon mount lens that won't allow it to work on this adapter? Is there going to be some kind of proprietary oh, wait. software or hardware or anything? Did I miss something on the article? Well, there's or? a tiny little bit of text at the bottom of this that says, also Canon lenses will work with the new oh, adapter. There we go. This means, and then the rest of it's gone. Sony Alpha Rumors. What, where's the rest of that text? So yeah, I mean, then for 250, now here's the question though, will the Canon lenses work as crappy <laughs> as the Sigma lenses do on the other adapters? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, but for 250, this makes it a lot more reasonable and I suspect the Sigma lenses will work very well. 
It has like, to be pretty cheap because this this market of people that have very like, small, you know, yeah. Sigma, why can't they just start making FE lenses, Sigma? Mm. I wonder why. This actually worries me that they're not going to anytime soon because they're going to be like, here's our adapter. Well, it sounds like you're going to have to get this in for review and really figure out how well it performs yep. before we can make any any more conclusions right? about it. We love our Sigma lenses. Yeah. Um, and does, is that a good segue into... Yeah, the next news story. Yeah, so this is pretty exciting. Sigma has released a 50 to 100 millimeter lens with a fixed, well, I guess not fixed, but a maximum aperture. Yeah, of, it is fixed too. Okay, fixed, of, of f, aperture of f1.8. So that's really cool. That's, I mean, that's kind of unheard of. It is unheard of. Yeah. It's similar to what they did with the 18 to 35. Um, also that kind of uh, f1.8 range. How I described the 18 to 35 in my review years ago was uh, it's kind of like carrying around a little bag of primes because mm. it covers that 18 range, it covers mm -hmm. the 20, 24 range, you've got the 30 and the 35, you know, all at f1.8. Here you've got a 50 f1.8, you've got a 85 f1.8 and a 100 f1.8. Yeah. Now, that's all the good news. Yeah. It is crop sensor only. Mm. Some people were really excited because they're like, woo. It is a thousand dollars. Yeah. But I mean And it weighs three pounds, somebody said. Ooh, Where's that's heavy. Yeah. It's it's you know, it's beefy. I mean I, ex yeah. I I believe that because the uh let's see where is is the weight in here? No, of course they don't have the weight. Oh wait, there's more. Nope, still no weight. Oh, physical. Yeah, three point two pounds. Ooh. That's, that's like a 7200 f2.8 because that's kind of what it is the APS-C version of this. Now, somebody asked me on Twitter. I don't know if you saw this. You've been busy. Um, somebody asked, would you ever consider shooting a crop sensor camera uh, with this lens at a wedding instead of your full frame 7200 stuff? No. Why not? Um, because I, I mean, I hate hypotheticals because, <laughs> like, are they asking if I would get a crop sensor camera or if like I had one? I think if you would like. Get I, one? I mean, I can save you no. some from this hypothetical because I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering what they think the advantages are. There's not really any weight savings advantage when you put this brick on the end of your camera. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's gonna kind of balance out, you know, sure. Current crop sensor cameras, you put this on the D500, I bet that would be pretty fantastic. Low light quality, I expect, would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the thing is, you know, once you do, once you factor in, once you calculate the equivalent uh, aperture, when you going you put Northrop it, on us? I'm going Northrop on you. <laughs> yeah, once you calculate the equivalent yeah. aperture, it's not, is it really going to be a one point, an f1.8? So. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, it kind of all weighs out. Um, and. You've already got a full frame camera that works for you. Yeah. And so don't really see any advantages to that. But I thought it was an interesting question, so I passed it along. All right. Yeah, well. Now, now that's not the only. still seems like a really nice lens, so. Yeah. Uh, Tamron has also. Yeah, there's another Sigma lens, though, and I, I, I linked it on, um, on my site. Uh, the Sigma, is it 30 f1.4 for E-mount and micro four thirds lenses. Mm. Uh, I'll just say briefly because we don't have a link for this. I don't know why I thought we did. Uh, it's a clear, curiously not part of their art series though. It is their contemporary series, which I found to be good, but not at the level of the art series. However, that's allowed them to keep it cheap. It's only 350. Here's what I'm thinking about, folks. I said I wasn't gonna say folks anymore because Sarah Palin says it too much. Um, Getting political now, huh? The A6300 which I'm gonna know a lot more about next week. And that 30 millimeter lens seems like the smallest, most amazing low light package you could get that shoots 4K, <laughs> I don't wanna say that. I just think that combination, a 30 F1.4 lens, yeah, yeah, equivalent Northrop stuff, I'm not dismissing it, but you know, until they all do it, we just have to go with what they say. Uh, on that camera could be pretty spectacular. So are a lot of other lenses too, but. All right, Tamron, what do they got? 
Uh, so they've got two new lenses. The first one is a is an 85 f 1.8 with vibration compensation in a 90 millimeter macro f 2.8. Um, I thought that Tamron already had a 90 millimeter macro. They do. Yeah. This is just an update to it. Okay. Optically, it looks like it's going to be about the same. They've upgraded the IS system. So it sounds a lot more like Canon's hybrid IS that's in the 100 that makes that such a versatile lens. I mean, uh, you just can shoot nice macros handheld with that lens a lot of the time because of its great stabilization. So it sounds like that. And it's, you know, um, it's, it's design, it's body design. Oh, I should bring up the page so we can show people, right? Uh, it's body design has been brought in line with those new, the 35 and the 45 uh, as well. Yeah, and then we've got that 85 F1.8, yeah. which, uh, you know, depending on how good the image quality is, I think it could potentially be a good competitor for the Canon F1.8, the yeah. 85 F1.8, which is an okay lens, but it's not that great. I don't so. know why we're on the rumors page of the, not the official announcements. We'll ignore that. It's been officially announced with real pictures. Um, the 85, I, I can't remember if there's a price for that yet or not, uh, but I think we're guessing like 650, 650 US dollars. Hmm. Um, yeah, price not yet available. Uh, shipping will cost apparently $4.51 from B&H. So. But extrapolating from the 35 and the 45 Tamron lenses, reviewers I, I trust sounds those lenses are quite sharp so it should be very okay. sharp yeah you you, um, you shot lots with the canon 85 which yeah yeah well what I, are your opinions i'm not that? concerned about sharpness although wide open the canon the 85 18 is quite soft but what really concerned me about it more than anything was the amount of chromatic aberration once you start to get to f2 point f2.0 f2.8 there's a good bit of it um especially when i you know you shoot like me, which I shoot backlit often, so there's a lot of opportunities for um, chromatic aberration around edges with high contrast. So, uh, yeah, I'll be curious to see how this performs yep. in terms of chromatic... I guess chromatic aberration is something that's pretty easily fixable in Lightroom, yeah, yeah, so it doesn't true. really matter that much. So, I guess in terms of sharpness, I do wonder how it compares. Yeah. I mean, the... the you know, we, it's, the 369. 369. I mean, yeah. that's a nice price. That is, the yeah. Canon 85 is a good value. I've been talking about this with people this week as this has come out. Yeah, but yeah, okay. I said the same thing. That that chromatic aberration on that is bad. I remember that. Yeah. Did, did we sell it or do we still have it? I I, I still have it. Mm, no. I think we sold it at the yard sale. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> For probably like, you guys should come to our yard sale. We yeah. sell things so cheap. Uh, okay. Now, Lightroom. Oh yeah, this on is on Android. This is I'm really jealous about this. Don't you have 2.0? Don't you have these same features? I don't have the the raw the raw capture oh, capability. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. So Lightroom uh, has been updated for Android, and it is the world's first end-to-end -end mobile raw photo app, which means that you can use it to take raw images with your phone and you can edit the raw images, you can export them and you can share them immediately. So, yeah, I don't, you know, you can't really see, but now in the interface, when you're at the base part of the interface, you just have a little camera button, you press it um, and it is the really camera cool. that captures DNGs. So I wonder if it's because of Apple sort of closed off, um, uh, what would you call it? Like the API. The, the API, the, the yeah. Access to the camera. You can't. But then there are apps that acts that you can. Shoot well, wrong. no, 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 no. Not as far as I know, actually. Now that I think about yeah. it. So and and even the camera app itself doesn't shoot raw. So I wonder if it's just a limit in terms of the operating system. We have to pull the, back our excitement a little bit because the raw files on the cameras. Are, I mean, they're not as, as exciting as a raw file out of a, uh, I mean, out of a But a the RAWs camera. on like the LG V10 and then this cam this phone that you have are really nice. The, yeah, I mean, th it does give you more post-processing, but it, it's not quite, you know, those highlights still get, get blown out uh, more easily on these little sensors and sure. they're not recoverable. But, but it's still really cool. It means that the yeah. technology is moving forward. It means that there's lots of really you know, cool developments coming probably. And yeah, I mean, I shot, and we're going to talk about this later on, but I shot 
all the pictures I have from New Zealand so far because I haven't got my film back and that's I know that I just decided to shoot film on my own I could have brought my digital SLR but um, but I, they're all from my phone and they're all I'm really happy with all of those pictures so just to be able to have more flexibility um, is really cool to me because I really love shooting with my phone so yeah Brady wants to know if Lightroom for iPad can handle raw editing if you import the raw somehow. I don't think so. But doesn't doesn't iPhoto on the iPad allow you to bring in raws from? Shoot, I can't remember. But I'll, so I can't I don't remember think those so. things. So I'm not going to talk about them. Uh, but I will I say so. that I still am a Snapseed fan. But I feel like I do need to break my Snapseed habit uh, because there are some really nice tools in Lightroom. The yeah. tone curve, that's the other big update. Well, they've is, updated, yeah, all of that. Yeah. And for iPhone, they updated that a long time ago. So I've been I've been really Use using that a lot. That a lot. Yeah. The only thing that I don't like about Lightroom is that, uh, about Lightroom Mobile, is that their sharpening feature, they don't have a sharpening feature. They just have the clarity, clarity adjustment, which I feel like makes pictures kind of look muddy. I like the crispness of just being able to like sharpen the individual pixels, which I do on Instagram after I've exported from Lightroom. So I don't actually sharpen in Lightroom Mobile. I sharpen on Instagram. I would I like. love to get from you your workflow. Yeah, I would love point. to share that. I think that would be fun. I would love to do a, a Lightroom uh, versus Snapseed. It's, it's on my list. It's creeping higher up as we get other videos out of the way um, because I think they both have their strengths. And again, like I said, I it's kind of stuck in. I just go right into Snapseed because I'm very quick with it. I'm not as quick as Lightroom Mobile, but um, I want to try more. Yep. All right. Next is Nikon has announced three new cameras. They are uh, oh. what? No, that? sorry. No, go ahead. Um, they are one. They have one inch sensors, so that falls into that category of like compact cameras with a one inch sensor. Yep. And we were having sort of an interesting discussion in, before the show because this is essentially the same camera with three different focal lengths. Like, they're pretty much nothing else is the same except the focal lengths, and it's a nothing fixed lens. Nothing else is different. Um, the lenses themselves are fixed, yep. so you can't switch, you can't swap them. Yep. So to me, it was interesting, like, why, would somebody just, like, get all three of them? Like, who is the audience for this camera? And you said... Vloggers. Yeah. Um, and, well, also, I mean, they're sense. trying to compete with a Sony. I mean, Sony has a lock on, I don't know exactly what their market share is, but of that one-inch sensor category here in the U.S., the, the RX100 series is the only one I hear anybody talking about. Um, you know, I've seen, uh, Tony's tweeted recently, he's got the Nikon J series in his hand. I don't see anybody talking about that really in the U.S. and I never see anybody using it. We traveled to New Zealand. There were um, a lot of Asian tourists because we're pretty close to Asia. Uh, and so I definitely saw some Nikon J series then, but getting out of the loop. Anyway, you've got three cameras. As you said, basically they're almost all the same except for the focal lengths. The first one I think is the, is the best for vloggers. It's an 18 to 50. Mm. There are very few point and shoots that start that wide, 18. Mm. So you can hold it out, you can get yourself and everything. It's got a flip up touch screen. That's a fast yeah. lens, f1.8 to 2.8 as you zoom. Um, and it offers perspective control to accurately depict architectural subjects and uh, correct for converging lines, which I think is nice. And you all have to add that when you're shooting wider like that. The next one is the 24 to 85 f1.8 to 2.8. I think this is what most people are going to buy. It's got a built-in ND filter. Uh, it's got a super macro mode and focus bracketing. And this one is, I think, the, the nicest price at 646. The other two, they're pricey at 846. And why is that? Is it because of the optics on them, or what? I think I think the, the 18 to 50 going that wide is difficult and point and shoot, and they felt like that was kind of special, so they could mark it up. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is a kind of a super zoom, and it, it has a slightly different size and shape too because of that. It is a 24 to 500 f2.8 to 5.6. It offers a sport VR mode that really helps you stabilize as you're tracking subjects with that on that longer zoom. It also is 9.96, and you could throw on this little adapter. Uh, viewfinder bit on the first two that will um, give you an electronic viewfinder. No word on price or availability yet on that. Okay. So, yeah, um, 
I, I've never been a fan of Nikon's point and shoots. I think that's gonna change with these. These look like nice cameras. They, they put do. Time to them. The cool pics ones are always just kind of like, eh. Uh, you know, and one of the reasons why Canon is still in the lead in the entry level DSLR is because of all these people 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that bought a Canon point and shoot, liked it, and then when they went to look for mm. the next step, logically to them. Yeah. So you Nikon kind of missed, what you know. missed that boat, uh, but now they're coming back. Yeah. So next on the news list is kind of a cool um, piece of gear that it's also, it, it's, I'm not sure how I feel about it. So it's, an, it's a neutral density filter and it's a Kickstarter campaign. Um, and it's an 11 stop neutral density filter priced at $150, I believe. It's one forty nine, maybe one fifty nine, one hundred fifty nine dollars. So, thoughts about that? All right, um, neutral density filters can be really useful for really blocking the light, slowing your shutter speed down, even in the middle of the day, getting some kind of cool, dreamy style pictures. Uh, they were pretty popular uh, with a couple different people on the New Zealand trip, uh, liking to use those. I, my experience with variable neutral density filters is it's very easy to get the dreaded cross in the sky. This is when you crank it to a certain direction because mm. basically what it is is two circular polarizers in reverse of each other. Uh, and it's kind of magical how it works. But at certain strengths, usually at the stronger end of things, you just get this band across the sky. So then you say, okay, well, I won't shoot the sky. There's a lot of times where it's really hard not to shoot the sky, and you also can see it in other kind of shiny, reflective places. I don't see anything about that here. So I'm nervous. I'm also nervous that it's Kickstarter because Kickstarter things fail all mm, the time. Yeah. And this price... I actually, you know, I went to their website and tried to l click on the, on the Kickstarter link to watch the video because usually, like, that, that's a really good a way to learn about the product and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the Kickstarter link went to the main Kickstarter page and not to their actual Kickstarter page. So. All right. Here's a picture where they got um, the sky in it and apparently they're using it right now. Yeah. So I don't know. The other thing is color casts. Now mm. there was a article someplace else today, chat room, you can help us out with that. Someplace else this week, early this week, that was kind of a rundown of neutral density filters. I don't think it was variable ones and what kind of color casts they added. And it was some brand that I hadn't heard of that actually was the least color casty. But my experience in Iceland and my experience uh, on the New Zealand trip uh, using these neutral density, you get color casts and it's tricky. If you're on a budget and you wanna do long exposures, just get up early in the morning before the light gets up or stay out late after the sun goes down. Yeah. That's what I did for years and years and years. Don't be lazy. Okay. All right. Uh, next It could up. be great. Maybe they dealt with the X somehow magically, and it's a fantastic thing. Yeah, maybe. No. Next up is a new gadget. Uh, I guess it's a gadget. It's a tool, but is it really that useful? Tamron has announced a tap-in console to customize lens AF, firmware, and more. It's This seems familiar. It's Yeah, it's exactly this the thing that Sigma released a while ago to Sigma update USB dock. Yeah, to update the firmware on lenses and to update to make uh, micro adjustments and uh, things like that. So I'm just wondering like is this really worth the money? Like you can make micro Isn't adjustments on your own. And well, no, no, no. See, here's the th here's that thing. I thought, you know, I like to be honest with you. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm smart, but I'm just going to be honest with you. I thought that's what that USB dock did. I thought we were going to buy that. We were going to plug in our Sigma 35, mm, which yeah. we were having, we, we thought we were having some issues with, yeah, yeah. and we were going to be able to, like, fix itself. No, you don't do any microfocus adjustments with either of these. Um, what you can do is kind of customize the AF, maybe speed it up, slow it down, set the limiting points that the switches correspond to, all of that stuff, yeah. and upgrade firmware. Which you said, since when do lenses need to get upgraded from? Yeah. So. Well, my answer is the technological progression, march down the road, things are getting more complicated. And as we get yeah. adapters in between the cameras and stuff, and as cameras update and focus systems, 
they want to be able to change the brains inside the lens as well. It doesn't really have brains, but the firmware. I should just say what it is. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, was, I was really underwhelmed with the Sigma's version. This seems to do the same thing. I think for some people it's useful, but, and I think it's pretty cheap. See, they do have listed here, though, on the little screen. Yeah, and they, I thought Sigma adjustment. did, too. No, it only let us change, like, the points where we wanted to s start and stop. But there was no way That's to lame. say, hey, it's out of focus. Let me adjust this. Yeah. And the thing is, wrong. like, so the dock is only supposed to make the firmware updates easier. But really, you could just get a USB cable and plug it into your computer and probably download the firmware. It's not like you have to have that thing to download the firmware updates. So... It really just seems yeah. useless to me. Yeah. I, I, useless might be a strong word, but... Yeah, okay. But not... It, n worth the money? Maybe not. We're not excited about it. No. All right. Hey, uh, let's, uh, let's... This next news story goes out to David, who's in the chat room right now. <laughs> DJI... Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. DJI will now sell you insurance to cover your inevitable drone crash. DJI is pretty smart. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they saw an opportunity. They jumped on it, like, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> um, Good job, DJI. Uh, you, David, do you, want, do you want me to tell folks that uh, you are flying your pretty new drone after the New Zealand oh, trip? Man. And somebody did a cannonball a little too close. Water, electronics, they don't go so well together. But apparently, DJI, is, they're going to fix this, and they can waterproof the internal electronics for you. So that's cool. That's nice to know now. Doesn't really help you uh, while you're waiting for your drone to get fixed. But so I actually didn't read this. Let's see what it says. Your aircraft is considered completely damaged if over 80% of the aircraft parts are damaged. We usually recommend replacing your aircraft if it's a complete if it's completely damaged. If there's a six-month plan and a one-year plan, and uh, what does it say for the Phantom 3 Pro? It's going to cost you $189 for six months or $279 for one year. That is pretty pricey, but it's certainly cheaper than a whole brand new oh, drone. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you got the one at B&H this week. The bottom level was or $399. Unless, like, I don't know. I feel like for you the... crash it a lot? Ye <laughs> well, yeah. Casey Neistat, just get this. No, but the, after the first... Yeah, I guess if you only if you crash it a lot, but if you don't crash it for, like, a few years, like two or three years, then it's like the... You, you have paid enough insurance to just buy yourself a new one. So right. if well, you're but fairly that's, that's careful with it. That's what insurance is. Well, yeah, I know. But if you're fairly careful with it. I mean, our house hasn't burned down in three years. So like, right, right, know, right. Let's it, not get our, insurance. Can we have our insurance money back? We didn't need it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, the, I understand that. The Inspire, uh, which is that higher level one of the little feet that fold in and everything, that's going to cost you six ninety nine, six ninety nine. dollars So, all right. I think that wraps up. Oh, there was one noise story I just mentioned. Rico has announced an update to their rugged action cam. Does anybody know anybody who has bought one or has heard about anybody who's bought one? His uncle, sister might have like seen one at this. I, I don't know anybody buying this stuff. Yeah, I don't think that this is. I mean, the action market, the action cam market is already so saturated that like they have to have some pretty powerful marketing um, push to actually be able to. Uh, really sell because it's not I mean they have these really cool features but they're not really that competitive price wise in my opinion to really sell that well or to like beat GoPro I mean even GoPro struggling you know so yep. yeah it just seems like maybe just to stay away from the action cam market yeah we got a lot of people um, following up with that Casey nice that he, I, I you know he's got to love to crash them a little bit because it's a little bit more entertaining you know if somebody's just flying their drone around normally you get boring after a while but every time he gets it out you're like what's he gonna crash it into how bad is he gonna break it yeah well um, anyway. this morning he painted was it this morning or yesterday's he painted his pink and green spoiler sorry if you haven't seen today's Casey nice that blog oh my god spoiler alert let's we're all done wrapped up news Yep, Anything we are. Anything else you want to talk about? Nope. Okay. It's photos from space time. Let's talk about photo from space. So, Riley said as we were about to go live, do we have a photo from space? And I said, oh, let's get one quick. NASA.gov. And here's one from yesterday. Expedition 46 flying through. They actually kind of like flew through 
this Aurora, which is just amazing. Uh, and that also makes me think, uh, or reminds me to tell you all that the McKays are going back to Alaska next winter, this coming winter. I don't know, can I say that we're in, yeah, you know what I mean. November, December of this year, the link is in the show notes. You can find out more about that. But the purpose of that trip is primarily to photograph the auroras. But the awesome thing about the trip the McKay's put together is there's also dog sledding. There is exploring a glacier and uh, just a fantastic scenic train ride. So it looks to be an awesome experience. Just amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, remind me again, I, I was responding to a comment on the chat. Was it announced already? Yep, it's okay. been announced that okay, you can great. sign up for it. It is at the end of November, beginning of December. You can join me. That's like some bucket list stuff. You can celebrate my birthday, because mm. I think it's right around my birthday. So you can all bring me presents. Uh, I'll allow that in Alaska. Warm booties. Actually, I'll just take like the heating pads you can put in your things, things like that. So. Yeah, cool. So. I All like right, we're at McKay Photography Academy's in the chat room, yeah. and I guess it's Allie because unless David's talking about himself in third person, it's <laughs> not good, David. Uh, David had two big. Oof, totally throwing David in under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Nicely done, Allie. Nicely done. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so let's talk about the Instagram challenge. Let's talk That's about the what's Instagram next. Um, so as we mentioned. Last week, you guys submitted so many pictures, which was really awesome. And they were all so fantastic. So thank you, guys. We really wish that we could, like, show off all of them, but we don't have the time for it. Um, so. We'll go scroll through them in a second. The theme was local. Yes. So we asked you to take a photo of something from your the town, the location that you are currently in. Yep. So do you want to go first? I do want to go first. I've got my first honorable entry on the screen. Our Dittmeyer, uh, beautiful Arizona. I love, we talk about tones and kind of, uh, you know, along with colors uh, often when we critique pictures and the, the tones in this, I think are fantastic. That bush really, kind of that tree really kind of highlights it, but then those mountains in the background that frame it. I think it's a really nice picture. I will say it feels like the saturation has been bumped a tiny bit higher than I would like. I could be wrong. But um, overall, I think it's a fantastic image and it's just really nice. And then we got Vinny's nice black and white, Chicago. You, yeah, I really still, like that there's one There's so many too. pieces to get out of this yeah. image. Um, let me just walk you through a couple of them. That, like, well, it's an elevated train track that says to me Chicago. We can tell that because we see like the second story of that building in the background. Mm -hmm. The woman's folding up an umbrella that looks like it's been beat to crap by the wind. The windy city, Chicago, and just you know. It is a nice black and white. Uh, it's done well. The uh, exposure is very nice. Ooh, that one's great too. I know. This is I, Philip or B. Hillib. This one and the one I picked as a winner, I was going back and forth. Uh, fantastic reflection. Fantastic framing. Love it. Love it. Great image. But I ended up picking... Rolling Stone 16. That's such a lovely photo. It's a great photo. There's parts of it that are soft because of, I think, motion. But the, the focus on the singer's face and the instrument and is the just light, sharp. And the light. The light's just so nice. It's like, great job. it's Ooh, it's almost, yeah, it's cinematic because it's, it's short lit. The portrait is short lit, which feels very cinematic. And it's just like nice and warm. You kind of like feel like you're there. It's really cool. Yep. Nicely done. Nicely done, and uh, who was somebody? Uh, Dittmeyer. Can you said. zoom can in a little? Somebody complained that the pictures are too small. No, yeah, sorry. Better. Okay. Uh, your first runner-up. So my first runner-up. I love the symmetry in this image, um, and it's. You know, I can't tell how much I like the fact that the end of the dock is almost intersecting with the horizon, but I just, it's, it's com this photo is compartmentalized so nicely and it just feels really balanced. Um, yeah, it just, I, I really enjoy the symmetry. I enjoy the motion because I, it looks like you may have used a little bit of a slow shutter. Um, and I love the colors as well. It's a really lovely sunset, really great capture. So Very nice. nice Thank job. you, Jay Stern. 
And another honorable mention. Another sunset. Um, That's a little unlike you. That is a little unlike you. Actually, this me. is a sunrise. Oh, okay. There we go. See? Mm -hmm. it's all okay. <laughs> For those who are fairly new viewers, we went through a period of time where we just kind of joked that Christina hated sunsets because you went on a little rant of like, stop taking sunsets. There are other things to take pictures of. Right. But I'm just saying, like, don't take, don't just like, oh, sunset, point your camera at it. But I'm, I'm saying, like, yeah. still take the time to compose a nice photo and take take time to think about your subject matter and things like that. So um, this is lovely. I personally like love fog everything, like when there's fog up on the hills or there's like fog coming up from the water. Uh, last year when we went to Montana with the McKays and we were in Yellowstone, there was, um, you know, it was winter time and we drove by along this river that there was just like steam coming out from it as it was also flowing and it was just like so beautiful. Um, so I love, I mean, these types of pictures and it's kind of hard to capture it sometimes, you know, like it doesn't always look good. So I admire your patience. I admire the composition. I think it's, it's, I love that it's kind of bottom heavy, but it's still balanced out by the sun peeking out from the horizon and then the detail in the clouds. So it's just really lovely. And then also I, I like that you kept the tones pretty true to what it probably looked like. Um, so I, I kind of feel like I'm there, so. Nice. And you happened to pick the same dude as your winner. Different I did picture. because this is such an awesome picture. Um, I love the perspective. Like um, I love the fact that you were able to get detail from the inside and the outside even though the 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 contrast was really high and the dynamic range was really high um and again it, it feels very compartmentalized and very organized and very balanced and it's i think you mentioned that maybe it could be cropped a little bit from the right like well just just excuse I was, me like the tiniest I bit was bothered but, just to buy a tiny bit by this stuff peeking here yeah and i i mean you could nitpick it you could say like oh maybe don't crop that dude but then at, at the bottom you know like you cropped his butt off but yeah. um but it, i i don't mind i think that they're great photo. It's a great image, and I love the the tones and the light. Looks like the sun's probably pretty low in the sky because it's kind of coming from the side. So yeah, it's just really nicely done. Yeah. Now I I totally hear what you say about this picture. I think it's lovely as well. But I think somebody could look at this and say, uh, kind of looks like a snapshot that they just took real quick. I disagree. Why? What 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 do you do you see? I'm not, I'm not arguing, I'm just asking, yeah, what do you yeah. see that really stands out to you? Um, this is where I have trouble sort of uh, articulating what makes this different than a snapshot. So first, what makes it different than a snapshot is that there was some processing done. So obviously this person took the time to even out the tone so that you could see uh, detail from the inside of this location and the outside. Um, it doesn't, it feels balanced, like every element is carefully placed um, so that the, it doesn't feel like there's too much going on outside or too much going on inside. My eye keeps wandering around the entire image. Whereas like a snapshot would probably have a crooked horizon or it wouldn't be edited, just be like right out of camera or it would be, you know, maybe like center, like they, this person probably wouldn't have taken the time to crop the right side off um, to kind of just give a glimpse of what's outside of this place. So hopefully that helps. Yep, it does. But it, it, to me, it does not feel like a snapshot one bit. Yep. So. Okay, great. Now, um, I see, I said I participated in this. So let me go right here real quick and say, uh, we had this weekend ski jumping here in town. Now, I was, I was pretty excited about that. We, it goes on every year, a weekend in February. I had never gone before it. I was kind of walked by, felt a little too cheap. But I was like, you know, this is perfect for the PRTVV local competition. It also, I took the Sony with a 70 to 200. I was like, let's see how it handles shooting these guys going by. The announcer said they go by at about 50 miles an hour when they're flying. Um, so I had a lot of fun shooting them. Got a lot of blurry pictures, but I was overall, to talk about the Sony for a second, was very happy with how fast it locked on and tracked these guys. Mm. Now in this one, I slowed the shutter speed a little bit and panned with him firing off a burst. I will say really cool. that five frames, a sec or five frames per second, which is the Sony's top, 
feels very slow mm -hmm. when you're trying to capture these guys. At one point I moved to where they come right off the ramp um, because one of the things that was cool about this is being such a kind of small, low, low key event, I literally could stand 15 feet from where they came off the ramp. And as they came towards it, I just start firing and very, I, I actually never got a shot where they were all in. They're either like up here or here because of the gap between the individual frames. But I'm, I'm going off. So, so um, I did that. Uh, so I was, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Uh, and also funny, I've got a, f um, we got a participant who lives here in town as well. Huh. And, who is that? Um, I, Hang Glider. I don't know who, what his real okay. name is. I'm going to go get coffee with him sometime since he lives here in Brattleboro. We're a town of about 10,000 people. Uh, and as I said, here's, I mean, there are just so many great pictures, folks. You did an yeah. awesome job. Thank you guys so much for submitting such awesome pictures. Yeah. And now I've got a question for you. It has to do with Christina's winner. What did I do with it? Oh, I know. Oh, not that one. I thought I had it open. What if I say open recent? This is good stuff, isn't it? And th I'm sorry. I thought it was right there. I know where I can get it. <laughs> oh no. So, um, there it is. while we're waiting for that, please remember to give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying what you're watching. It helps let other people know that this is a nice show, that they should come back next week. Definitely, you should come back next week as well. So, thumbs up, please. That's right. Ooh, just uh, we'll talk about elbow. next week's show being uh, interesting and different soon uh, because we're going to have a remote guest. Uh, so on my screen are two images from the local competition. One happens to be uh, one of your honorable mentions. Mm -hmm. One happens to be another image by the same person. I, just, I, I saw both of them. I thought both had some strengths and qualities that I liked. I was curious if I threw this out to you all, what do you like best between these two? The left or the right? How can people vote? Well, give me a second now. Um, come back off my screen, Riley, and I'm going to go here into YouTube, and there's this poll function now in the... Oh, it's in the other browser. Things are getting messy, aren't they? Sorry, hang on. Um, yep. Why don't you entertain people, Christina, while I go into the control room? What shall I do to entertain y'all? Uh, so what's, what's the challenge for next week? Have we talked about that? Uh, no, we haven't. Oh, I think it might just be there. Folks, is there a little, right here in the top left corner, just a little icon that you can click on and choose left or right? Uh, and uh, if that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just click it, left or right. Yeah, it just works. Uh, that's the new poll function built into YouTube. And um, you can let us know. Let me put the pictures back up for a second. Oh, man, why does it go away? I am being challenged by this machine. Here it is. Make it big. Left or right? How do I make it big? <laughs> I think I think if you press this little button right, the green button. Now the green button. Yeah. It wasn't there before. All right, left or right? All right, and while you are voting in that little button in the top left corner. Did, did we tell them the challenge for next week? No, we didn't. Well, today happens to be, Christina, do you know what today's holiday is? Mm, well, it's not Catterday, because it's not Saturday. I don't it's know. I have no holiday. idea. <laughs> it's, it's totally a holiday. It's Flag Day. Oh, so okay. I want you to take that inspiration, I don't know what that inspiration is, and go shoot some flags or find some flag photos you've shot, upload them to Instagram, and tag them, PRTV underscore flags. PRTV with an underscore S. flags. Yes, with an S. Okay. We'll never have that debacle again. All right. All right. So, and we'll check, I, I will check in with the voting in a few more minutes. But um, are we ready to move into like Q&A? I think so. Well, no, we're good. we've got our discussion. Oh, yeah, our discussion. So we're going to talk about some pictures from New Zealand. Um, and I think we're going to keep it brief because we're running a little bit behind and we still have to answer questions. Yeah. What I'm trying to figure out is where do I see the results of the poll? Great card. View after voting. Mm. Oh, when does voting end? Well, maybe we'll leave it up for like a week or something. Yeah, okay. We'll check back next week and see what you all said. <laughs> Since that's what seems that our only option is. Yeah, we're going to talk uh, uh, for a minute about yeah. our favorite images from New Zealand. A lot of people have been asking. I, I agree. I'd like to show a few of them. Uh, we wait any longer, and then we'll be like, oh, that was that trip we took so long ago. 
um, and they'll just get lost in my library too and I'll never find them again. Now my library is super organized. All right. Um, well, you know, I had, you all are going to see this video out probably early next week. I had an awesome conversation with Adam Furtado, uh, who goes along on these McKay trips and awesome also runs dude. Photo Nerds Unite um, because he took a, tele, a serious telephoto, a 100 to 400 to New Zealand with him, and he shot a lot of landscape photography with that. And, you know, I'm running this little anti-campaign against wide angle is the automatic lens choice for, for uh, landscapes. Um, I'm not saying it's not, I'm just saying it's not the automatic choice. And he had some great things to say about that. I had some things to say about that. We shared some pictures. So you'll see some of these again. But um, Riley, we can go ahead and start with me. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and just, these are just a couple of the highlights from the trip. And actually my first picture, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen most of these. A lot of people have been asking, where can I see you know, your favorite pictures? Instagram's the best place to see that. You can also go to 500 pics. I'm a little bit more selective about what goes up there than Instagram, obviously. But um, here it is, downtown skyline of Auckland. I shot this with a 70 to 200, right about 100 millimeters. It was pretty dark. That was a great night. That was like our first or second night there in Auckland. Yep. Yeah, the, the trip and hadn't even officially started. We had some early um, participants join us. That was really nice. Um, and yeah, it was a great way to start the trip. And it remains one of my favorite images with this longer shutter speed that allowed the water to blur a little. You know, a lot of people, Cute. you know, I, I hear mixed reviews of the Sony 70 to 200. Some people feel like it's not quite as sharp. It seems like quality control might not be perfect with that lens. But the one that I had for this trip I feel like it was quite sharp. Here's 7200. We're in at one to one, and um, it's a silver eye. I can't remember what he was called. Some of the little New Zealand bird. I love how this this foot like looks like it's <laughs> barely hanging on, but he's so hanging out cute. there. So I just kind of like that. I wish this dead stuff wasn't up there, but this went up today on Instagram, um, and you know it's, it's just kind of it's kind of classic shot. I had that roken on, and we had these redwoods that were all tight in. And so it just worked out really nice. The mud shot. Mm. Let me do something for a second. Let me uh, back off my star rating and show you how many of these mud shots I shot. I shot a lot of them. The D, that was very um, smoky, foggy, steamy. Steamy is what it was. And stinky. Oh, this one's pretty good too. It looks like a face going. Oh, it does. Oh, that one's great. I should move that back up to it too. Yeah. Um, the D haze function worked really nicely with these, but I just, I shot a ton. And the one that I, have right here is one of my favorite. Outside Ooh, of Christchurch, that's beautiful. 7200 again, up at about 127. It really allows you to kind of compress the foreground and the background and tightens it all up um, and not leaves it all kind of loose and you're wandering around trying to figure out what the subject was. Some nice roses in the uh, Christchurch Botanical Garden. More. This actually, I believe, Christina, is your shot because this is with the Sigma. Yeah. Is it one of your favorite shots, or you just? I like think it? so. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's one of my overall favorite shots, but um, but I like it. Yeah. yeah. This was the view. Literally, I took this. If you watch the vlogs, you know, on the uh, balcony of our hotel room in the Mount Cook Regional Park. Again, with a seventy to two hundred at seventy. Mount Cook there in the background is the snow-capped one. I just love this image. Similar image. Uh, after the light levels dropped, kind of like the twilight feel to this, and then the stars. Yeah. Not only the stars and the Milky Way, but those mag ma uh, Magellanic, Magellanic clouds sitting off onto the right, which are some galaxy clusters. Pretty awesome. Another kind of classic road shots. I, you know, I didn't come up with anything. I don't think I shot anything on this trip that was like super creative, no one's seen before. But I'm happy with the shots I got in these kind of amazing locations. I mean, that's why you come to these places is to take those like pretty classic. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Cool shots. Um, this, do y'all see what they're doing here? This is a little reflection. They've got the sign upside down backwards so that the reflection spells it out right. I think that was pretty clever. It doesn't look that sharp when I zoom in there. Oh, there it oh, goes. There it, is. it hadn't loaded. That's pretty clever. Those. Kiwis, they got a good sense of humor. Milford Sound, I, just beautiful. what do you want to say? Talk about post-processing, this one and the next, uh, I clicked it over to Nick. In this one, it was the color effects, and in the next one, it was the black and white. And I just clicked around until I saw what I liked and then made some minor adjustments at certain control points. 
Uh, I like Nick for going black and white. I feel like, honestly, I like to be honest with you all, I feel like I can't do it well in Lightroom. I don't, I very rarely like the black and whites I make in Lightroom. But Nick gives me that little bit of extra oomph that I like. And then the last picture on, I think our last full day after the Dart River um, speedboat, we wandered around in this area called Paradise, New Zealand. And I mean, you know, scenery. Whew. So now you sent me some Instagram ones that I have to click and open up because yeah. why because are your favorite pictures only on Instagram, Christina? Because I only shot film other than video and I got lazy and I didn't ship them to the lab to be developed until today. So I probably won't get them back until uh, maybe Monday, maybe probably Monday. So we'll see. Yeah. But uh, but I was pretty happy with my phone photos. Well, so remind people what you're shooting with. What's your phone? Uh, my, the iPhone 6 Plus. That's my phone. And 6S Plus. 6S Plus. And yeah, that's it. Basically, I just uh, I use the manual camera app, which I've talked about on the show before. It's uh, it's just called Manual, and I think it's one ninety nine or something. And it lets me control the shutter speed. It lets me control the ISO and white balance. And I think that's it. Uh, but I love it because I can. It's really difficult to just get a good exposure using the native camera app. So it's nice to have that manual flexibility. So this is one that I took with my iPhone and this particular scene was like just unbelievable. Like you could have what what's you could have shot that with a toy camera and you would still gotten like an amazing picture out yep. of it because it was an incredible scene. Yeah. And I just made sure that there was enough dynamic range, which is a challenge with iPhones and small sensors. So did you underexpose a little? I underexposed a little bit because there's that little cloud and you can see that I lost a little bit of detail in that little cloud anyway, but it doesn't matter. You can't, it's not that obvious, but I did lose a little bit of detail. So I underexposed a little bit. Um, I did that with a lot of photos actually. And then I took it to Lightroom Mobile and I edited it and then to Instagram. Nice, yep. Yeah. I like, um, so this is very similar to my, I mean, it's the same direction I mm -hmm. shot my black mm -hmm. and white. I like shooting with a phone, you got a wider angle. I like your little um, glimpse of road that kind of snakes down in there, leads you further down the valley. Um, I saw, I remember you taking this. Oh yeah, so this was at, uh, gosh, I can't remember what this is called. Um, I think someone said. It's the, it's, um, Yes. What it's called? It's a. Uh, it's the it's the peaks outside of Christchurch. Yeah. Um, Somebody said on the shot I took um, that was my road shot. Was yeah. Up here. So this I my favorite part about this picture I think is the motorcyclist because mm -hmm. it just adds a little bit of life to an otherwise just like mm, I mean the sunset's good or it's nice nice colors but I don't know it just adds a little bit of it, an element of life to life. it yep. too. So yeah. I, I really like that. And I liked all the negative space. I was happy about that. I, that sun just hitting the very peak of that. Ugh. I know. That was, that, yeah. As Chelsea that said, sunset. dreamy. Yeah, yeah. It was dreamy. Um, this was another spouse like, oh my God, we have to stop. I think this was pretty, it was either really late in the afternoon or really early in the morning. But the sun was just like streaming between the mountains, and it was just so beautiful. Um, we had a we got a lot of that. Yep. And sorry, I was getting distracted by the chat room. And you took a picture in paradise as well. Yeah. So this, um, I just saw the, like the smoke, the little the dust coming up, and I was just like, I have to capture this. And it was a little too busy in color, so I turned it into a black and white, and I was pretty happy with it. I don't think I, I didn't take a film picture, but I'm happy with this one. Um, I could probably darken those mountains a little bit because it, now it feels a little too bright, but but I'm I'm I I'm pretty happy with the shot. Yeah. So again, if you want to see um, our shots as we're taking them on these trips, or just what we're up to day to day, we both post fairly regularly on Instagram. You can follow us. Uh, those links are down below. I'm Photorec Toby. You are Christina Bernalis. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that reminds me, I mentioned, you know, two giveaways. If you haven't been paying attention, we have the GoPro is awesome. That's cool. But we have, with the McKay's and a bunch of other sponsors, including Thompson Safaris, an amazing giveaway to Tanzania, Africa, 
you, your airfare, your accommodation, your food while you're on the safari. Good、an amazing、food. safari. An amazing safari. Like trip of a lifetime. You might feel like you don't have the lens for it. You're gonna get a 150 to 600 lens to keep from Sigma. A backpack. A backpack. Very.、Uh, I'm not gonna pull it out. It's messy down there.、Uh, a nice backpack from Mindshift Gear.、Uh, print credit, rental credit. I mean, it's just an amazing experience opportunity. If you haven't entered, you are crazy pants. Go right now to photorec.tv/giveaway to enter. Don't even think about it. And、Just、if you've entered before, you should go back there. Two things you can do. There's a, a bonus entry you can earn right now for following me on Snapchat. So you go back there. If you're a Snapchat user, you can get another bonus entry. Plus, take a moment to grab that lucky URL that they give you and send it out to your friends and say, "Hey, I'd really like to win this. Would you enter?" It gives me a bonus opportunity. And you're not going to get spammed. You're going to get emails from these wonderful sponsors: Thompson Safaris, McKay's, myself.、Yeah. We're not spammers. We send you useful, beautiful stuff. Yeah. So,、enter. and Ali says this is biggest giveaway ever. And yes, it's also the best giveaway ever because we're not just giving you gear and backpacks and things like that and and just like gear, but You're getting the experience to go to this amazing place, make amazing memories, and also actually get out there and create amazing photographs with the help of the McKay Photography Academy team. So this is like you could not make a better take a. There's like few things that you could do that are better than this to improve on your skills and to become a better photographer. So.、Okay. Yeah, we launched it right around the time where the Powerball amount was something crazy, and I think it was Adam who said, "You know, this is like the Powerball for photographers. I mean, it is just、yeah. that much of an experience. It's just fantastic to be part of this. I am super psyched to join whoever comes along on this trip. It's going to be crazy pants, awesome. It's my、yep. new favorite word. Crazy, crazy pants. Crazy pants.、Kay. I used to have crazy pants in high school. I think I lost them. All right." We're answering a few questions. We、yes. are running long. We are. So let's hope, Roy. I know you've been in the chat room. Thank you for your help. Yep, there's plenty of questions.、Um, okay, Cameron Baldwin wants to know. I just bought a Sigma, a new Sigma 150 to 600C Contemporary,、yep. and when mounted to the D750, there is a tiny bit of play, only rotational play, that you can feel when zooming in and out. Doesn't appear to affect the images, but it's something I should be worried about. I have no so、idea. I think I think you're talking about at the mount location. As you zoom, you're feeling a little bit of play there. I felt that with other、uh, lenses. If, I don't think you if should. If it really is a small amount, it's not a big deal. Yeah,、um, like the tiniest bit, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, But if、I、it's like it. turning, like right, yeah, yeah.、No. As long as it's staying latched, you should be fine. Okay. Mike Ricky wants to know.、Uh, says he shoots Fuji. For mainly street and fine art work, and is looking into investing into the Sony system, maybe mainly to use it for landscapes and cityscapes. And wondering what you think of the 24 to 70 f/4 and the 35 f/2.8. Yeah,、um, yeah. I actually would say,、uh, you know, for cityscapes, I think I would walk around with the 55 1/8 instead of the 35. Well, that's tough. Oh, you said sorry. You said cityscapes, not like street. So you use the Fuji for street and fine art work. You want the Sony for landscapes and cityscapes. Yeah, that combination, twenty-four to seventy and thirty-five.、Uh, uh, that fifty-five, full fifty-five on a full frame is just a really nice focal length. I think you can you can do cityscapes with fifty-five. It's starting to get a little narrow, but、um, it is a fantastic lens. Thirty-five is nice too. I like that a lot. It's a lot lighter weight and smaller. Not a lot lighter weight, but it is smaller. All right. Yeah. James Yan wants to know if the Canon 8512 is leaps and bounds better than the 8518. Yes. Well, hold on. You read that wrong. You read that as you wanted to. You read that 8512. He asked 8514. There is no 8514. I know. So I don't know if James doesn't know that, or if we've just got a typo in. I'm、here. just assuming that he means the L version. Okay. So if you mean the L version, no. I mean, yes, it's way better. Like. Just that, like, if you 
don't it's have the money. Than most lenses on the planet. If you don't have money to afford L class lenses, don't rent or buy or use the 8514 because it will ruin you. It'll just it's one of those lenses that are just beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's not it's not about its sharpness. It's, it's got this it's look. Color it's colors, it's and contrast. No, you know, chromatic aberration yeah. and it's just it's I mean it's really slow to focus. Like it's a tank, it's big and heavy, but yeah. it's Gorgeous. Yep. Uh, okay. Frank White wants to know, Tamron and Sigma used to have a reputation for inconsistent quality control. Do you think that quality control has improved to the point where lenses are reproduced with fewer bad copies? That's a good question. I do. The Sigma's art series, you know, uh, not only have we found it to be excellent, we've got two copies of the 50, one of the 35, and all reviewers I trust have found them to be excellent. Uh, so this art series, their quality control is very, very good. Um, on their, you know, under the art series, I think it's good. It's not as good, but it's still good enough. We, we get caught up in, in, in this, and I think, we, I think quality control across the board in general is much better on all of these things. Tamron, also as well. Um, you know, I've got that slightly infamous video. I don't think it actually has even that many views where I kind of like pack up the Tamron 24 to 70. I clearly got a bad copy. It was extremely soft and had terrible communication errors with my camera. I know a lot of people that are happy with it and I haven't heard a ton of other people griping about that. So I think Tamron's quality control might be a step behind Sigma's art series, but still very good. And the new Tamron lenses, the 35, the 45, and these 85s coming out, I believe that they will be very consistent as well. So yes. In general, yes. Taylor McPhee wants to know, would you do consider doing a video on shooting film? Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's actually kind of a cool idea. What would you like to know, Taylor, about shooting film? Find one of Christina's film Instagrams and a comment and let her know. Yeah. Uh, Tim, do we have a physical checklist for camera settings and gear for important shoots, e.g. weddings? Not camera settings, but gear, yes. Yeah. Uh, we have been less consistent about using it in the last year than in the past, but yeah, there is a, a checklist that we yeah, checklist. go through. It's actually linked under our wedding videos. If you hmm. search the channel for the wedding videos, you can find yeah. it. It might be starting to get a little bit out of date. Um, but yeah, it was important to run down. It's important at the end of the evening to run down too and make sure everything's back in the bags. Um, although as we got more like, you know, know which lens went in which spot of our bag, it was easier to look over it. Settings for the camera, no, there's just, we set the time and there are just, you just kind of glance over. Uh, my issue is a lot of times I'll have the camera set on something funny because I was testing it earlier in the week and then you walk into the wedding and you're like, small JPEG, whoops. But you know, always caught that in time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Uh, okay, uh, Toby, do you ever do black and white in Photoshop? Have you tried alien skin exposure yet? I love it. Vera, I avoid Photoshop like the plague. Only if I need to do serious cloning do I go in Photoshop. Um, I should probably take lessons from Adam. Uh, you know, I just, I'm just not comfortable in it. I've, I've done that in the past, uh, you know, and I use it for graphics work, but for, for changing things on my pictures other than cloning, I don't do much in Photoshop. So I have not. And I have not tried alien skin exposure yet. Yeah, I'm gonna skip, let's answer one more question and then move on because okay. we're yeah. falling behind. Um, so Lewis Adams wants to know, how did I get images to show my first wedding clients? And the answer to that is I second shot for another photographer who let me use the Im some of the images that I shot with credit to his studio in my portfolio. And that's how I got my first wedding clients. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, approach a photographer and be like, how can I help you? How can I, can I do something for you? Can I come carry your gear? Can I come? And then that's your in and then you build, um, you know, and then hopefully you'll second shoot and then get pictures to put in your portfolio. And you have to make sure that the photographer is open to you doing that because there are some photographers who don't allow that and if they don't, then you should make sure that you get paid appropriately and get compensated accordingly That's if good. you can't use the photos. Yeah. So. And then you work with them for a while and get the experience and then maybe either shoot your own or find somebody else yeah. that will allow you. 
Uh, uh, the other thing you can do is just charge a really low ball rate if you're really just trying to get into it. And I mean, this is something that I don't really advocate doing because people's weddings are, you know, they're a big deal. So, um, but if like, if it's somebody who really doesn't have a big budget and they don't really care too much about quality and you just want to get your feet wet, um, I would advise you to check out Creative Live and see if they have any of their live um, shows going on where you can learn as much as you can about preparing to shoot a wedding and then, you know, like sh shoot the wedding and just let them know. I think transparency is the key here, um, even if you have a portfolio. Transparency. Time to wrap it up. I'm all done. Yep. Great. We're going to answer a couple more of these questions in the after show. I think we are going to wrap this up. Remember, the after show is that portion where, well, if you're watching live, you get to see it right now. We poke the cat. Oh, you thought I was going to poke it? Nope. Not until the after show. And uh, we answer a few more questions and just generally chit chat about all kinds of things. If you're not watching live, you've got to be a Patreon supporter. The show is brought to you by some of you wonderful people out there. You can support this show at various monthly levels. Three, five dollars, three dollars gets you all of our Lightroom videos, the support group where if Lightroom is acting up, deal. like this, Catherine this week could not get her all of her iPhotos into Lightroom. I haven't heard back from her, but I think she's much happier now. Uh, and so, that's awesome. Five dollars, you've got a question about gear. There's tons of people in the chat right now that have questions. What if you could ask those questions anytime you want and get an answer from me, from Christina, from wonderful people that are um, there in this group. It is a fantastic group of people. And there's higher levels too, personal critiques, all kinds of stuff. Check it out at photorec.tv slash support. And you've got a couple tasks. Make sure you go into the giveaway for the GoPro. Go get your lucky URL for the big crazy pants giveaway. And uh, follow us on Instagram. Yep, and give us a like if you enjoyed the show. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. And we'll see you next week. It's going to be interesting because Toby's going to be in Florida. So we're going to try to Skype him in. What's that Will Smith song? Go to Miami. Do any, Welcome to Miami. Any of you live in Miami? So I'll be in Miami for the Sony event shooting with the A6300 and their new G series 24-70 and 70-200 F2.8 lenses. Um, so I'll be in Miami for a few nights with not much to do. Maybe a photo walk, maybe a very informal meetup. Uh, again, follow me on Instagram or Twitter would be the best places to find out about those. Or the Facebook page. Make sure you sign up for notifications so that you don't those don't get buried. Okay. We'll see you guys next week at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, peace Thanks out. Thanks for watching. Yep. Now the after show. <laughs>